would you mind taking a few minutes and talking to us about your wonderful teacher and mentor, Hans Hoffman? Well, Hoffman was and still is a big influence on me in the sense that he was the first person who made a convincing case for the artist as a cultural figure, as somebody who, uh, who is to be taken seriously, not just as a decorator or, or a creator of uh, uh, expensive uh, objects for people with uh, disposable incomes, but as somebody who, um, um, in a visual sense, embodies the, the, the moment, uh, the cultural moment in which he's working. And uh, uh, so, so he thought that uh, to be an artist uh, was a calling. It was not, not just a profession, but it was like, like being a priest or a monk. It was uh, something that you had to feel had some kind of inner significance and cultural significance. And uh, so as a result of that, not only I, but most of his students took, took this idea of, of being artists very seriously. And it was a very good moment in which to do that because it was the moment of, in which the first generation abstract expressionists mm -hmm. kind of held sway. And there were these rather remarkable and admirable figures like uh, Bill de Kooning and Franz Klein and Mark Rothko and Jackson Pollock who were, um, who were on the scene and uh, very available because they, they hadn't become historical figures, mm -hmm. so you could go out drinking beer with them, you know, even though you were just a young artist fresh out of art school. You know. And um, so I, uh, me and my group, we, we, we were like the, the very easy transition from these older and more philosophically inclined artists to uh, what was going on in my generation. Do you recall how you and Hoffman first met? Well, I met him by going to, the, to his school, and everybody told me that the only game in town was Hans Hoffman. And you ended up being his studio assistant, didn't you, Wolf? Well, that, that happened after I studied. Uh, I was his monitor in the school. The monitor is the person who sweeps up um, the mess after class and sets up the easels and so forth. But I became... I became uh, much more than that. I lived with Hoffman in the summer in Provincetown, and um, I was able to, to translate his English into his English into um, um, uh, language that people could understand. Because he'd say things, "This painting is too bunt," and people would look at each other and they say, "What does he mean by that?" And I'd say, well, bunt is a German word for which no English exists, which means disorganized color, like uh, Joseph and the bunte coat, you know, and um, or bright color, and um, um, you know. So, and 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 when Hoffman was lacking a certain English word, sometimes he turned to me and I'd tell him because I knew German well and I was my mother tongue, you know. He never had any children. And his wife, Meets, was a wonderful woman. And, and Hoffman uh, had his house, the interior of his house was all painted on, on, on white plaster with um, um, Windsor Newton paints dissolved in turpentine. We had to put it on with a sponge, you know, be very careful not, not to, not to uh, uh, make a mess. And so forth. And Meats and Hoffman used to have terrible fights over what color should go into the into the uh, the stairwell and so on. And when Hoffman's back was turned, Meats would say, "Come, mix that, cut me yellow lemon." <laughs> <laughs> so we'd paint the whole stairwell, cut me a yellow lemon, and Hoffman would come home for lunch and see this, and he'd look at his wife and say, "Meats, you are an rat of a woman." <laughs> <laughs> Who were the uh, other students, your colleagues, at the same time that you were in the Hoffman School? Uh, Larry Rivers, um, um, Joan Mitchell, um, Resica, um, Jane Wilson, um, 
a whole, whole lot of people, uh, George McNeil. Sure. You know, I mean, all kinds of people that, uh, uh, some of whom, uh, George, Paul George's, some of whom became quite, quite well known. You know? yes. And, and the, the people who'd been there earlier, uh, whom I didn't know because I was only there from 1947 on, they, um, they, some of those became even better known than, than, than these, these guys. So I'm, I felt, I felt that I was, I'm, I'm sort of the um, resident Hoffman expert. But on the other hand, there's another guy who also studied with Hoffman named James Gahagan, who I think died. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And he thinks he's the resident Hoffman expert. But for a while, he made Hoffman into some sort of an academic, which he certainly was not. And he, I wrote an article um, about, um, um, for, for Art in America on Hoffman, I said, Hans Hoffman's contradictory messages. You know, and I said about Hoffman that he was like the Bible. You, you feel that Jesus want, wants, wants his followers to, to live a decent life. Hoffman wants his students to be decent artists. You know? And he managed somehow to, to bring this message to life. Like one where he, one day he'd say expressionism is a terrible thing, and a dirty word, you know. He'd look at somebody's painting and say, it's too expressionistic, you know. And then the next day he'd say expressionism is the healthiest movement of the 20th century, <laughs> and things like that, you know. But he was also a phenomenal person. He was a very many-sided, many-faceted man. We're, we are doing a um, Hans Hoffman show here at the gallery next mm -hmm. spring. Good. And the title of the show is uh, Artist, Teacher, Legend. Good. Good title. Yeah, and I don't mind being part of, you know, the promulgator of the legend. Ex and because I really are. think he deserves it. You know, because he was an, un an extraordinary, unusual personality. He also was very, very funny. And he, he claimed that he was deaf, you know. And then somebody in the class would ask him, uh, for a scholarship, you know, they were broke, they needed, and Hoffman would bend his ear and says, I don't hear, I don't hear, an, an, a special today, bad, uh, another day maybe I hear. And then um, then some girl would, 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 would say, way off in the corner of the, of, of the school, she'd say, you know, the thing about Hoffman is he's a very sexy guy. He's, he'd smile and look in her direction, you know. <laughs> So he was, you know, he was not a, not a plaster saint by any means. Let's talk a little bit, Wolf, about the early years when you uh, left New York and the Hoffman School and headed to the University of Chicago. Well, I went to the University of Chicago because of because Hoffman. I was I was starting to really get get very um, nutty about being a young artist. I, I took everything much too seriously, much too literally. I said to Hoffman, should I go to, um, to college? To, 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 um, because I'm getting so neurotic over this art thing. And Hoffman said, that is a good idea because you are suffering from mental indigestion. <laughs> <laughs> years 
after that. He still he still used that vibrant color, that punch that we love so much.